All right. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. I'm excited for you guys. Um, to, my name is Marnie Hernandez. I've been with the company for almost eight years now. And today we are doing the London Expert Certificate Workshop. So uh, for those that didn't do the regular London first uh, course, it is now recorded and on my YouTube. This is now the expert one. So let's sell to our clients, get some amazing information and uh, make that money. Right, guys? All right, so London mm -hmm. Expert TVO Academy, cosmopolitan, pulsating, exciting, bustling, best describes the mega city of London, often referred to as a city of the center of the world and a world in one city. London has been ranked number two most visited cities in our planet. Okay, that's kind of cool. Didn't know that. Um, okay, no frequently asked questions. So let's start the course. Again, when you're doing these courses, make sure your name is showing up at the top and make sure once we get up there, save the itinerary right here, all slides. And then that way you will have them um, available um, to refer back to, okay? So I'm gonna put London Expert and now I'm going to save the itinerary. Okay, perfect. So now all these will be saved and you can refer back to them, again, to help sell to your client. All right, so London and its origins stretches back thousands of years, and archaeologists from their findings have estimated, estimated that London in prehistoric times was a collection of scattered rural settlements. However, it was the Romans who invaded Britain in 43 AD, and then the Roman governor of Britain, um, Astorius Scapula, gave orders to build a permanent base on the north bank of T Times, Thames, is it Thames? Thames. Um, Thames, thank you. And was named Londinium, London, as we know it today. It is thought by historians that the original settlement of Londinium was small, about the size of Hyde Park. City of London is widely referred to simply as the city of colloquially, sorry, colloquially, anyway known as a square mile, 2.9 kilometers in area, situated at the very heart of London and is the place from which modern day London grew. Almost two millennia after um, London was founded, the Times is, um, Thames is still the soul of the city. Its main topographical feature and the river crosses the city from the east to the southwest. The Romans turned Londinium into a major commercial center in Roman Britain. The settlement, it is estimated, had over 50,000 inhabitants at its peak, and it was ethnically a diverse settlement then also with people from across the Roman Empire. Continental Europe, North Africa, Middle East, and natives of Britannia lived here. The first definite mention of London refers to 60 AD in the work of Roman historian Tacitus, who wrote about it as a known center of commerce bustling with traders. All right. So again, these are kind of history, history uh, buff stuff. Um, if you guys are interested, um, maybe just take a screenshot. I don't think we're going to remember all these. Okay. So Romans founded the settlement. They constructed the wooden bridge. So if somebody wants to take like a screenshot, Paul, St. Paul's Cathedral was built in 604 AD. Title of the Lord Mayor of London was granted. So again, um, if you're a history buff, you can go through that. Uh, I'm not going to read every single one of these. Um, so again, if you want to take a screenshot, thank you, Suzanne. She's amazing. Um, okay, so Kensington Palace, again, when was East India Company founded? 1600 AD, again, could be a test question. First check issued at the bank. Um, so again, these are, are kind of things you know, not really helps us to sell to our clients. So I'm not really going much into this right now, but um, some of these, again, give you kind of the history to help you, you know, to understand, okay? Um, British Museum London, again, building activity, Royal Military Academy was established 1741. Um, the register of the ships was published, et cetera, okay? London Stock Exchange founded 1801. Marie Tussaud exhibits her wax sculptures for the first time in 1802. 
coronation of Queen Victoria. Uh, London docks are open. Newly completed clock tower at the Palace of Westminster becomes fully operational. The Great Bell acquires the name Big Ben. And so on and so on and so on, okay? So Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee celebrations, etc. So again, I don't expect any of you to memorize these. Um, and there's no way Taking I can- Taking another screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Golden Jubilee Emirates airline cable car starts operating in 2012. And so now we're getting, you know, to the most recent. Okay, so overview. London Fashion Week. Okay, the city of London boasts a wealth of culture and history. This is why it is such a heavily visited city. In fact, the second most visited city in the world. It is a political, economic, and cultural capital of the United Kingdom and one of the most ethnically diverse cities of the world. London is known for its arch, arts, culture, tourism, commerce, being home to the seat of the UK government and official residence of the Queen. Um, London culture high points. Okay, spectacular drumming and Notting Hill Carnival. So London has a total of 215 museums out of 11 are national museums. Most popular and visited is the British Museum, which houses the most famous Rosetta Stone. National Gallery, National History Museum, Victoria and Albert Museum, and a name, to name a few. London has four UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Again, could be a test question. The Tower of London, the Royal Botanic Gardens, Q, Westminster Palace, Westminster Abbey, St. Margaret's Church, and Maritime Greenwich. London has more than 800 art galleries, and its visual arts sector comprises 30% of the global market. London hosts more than 250 annual festivals like City of London Festival, Pride London, London Film Festival, Trooping the Color, London Design Festival, and Notting Hill Carnival. Alone attracts over a million uh, visitors. London hosts more than 17,000 music events annually, and the venue O2 Arena is one of the most sought after popular venues in London. Third of England's archives are based in London. The biannual London Fashion Week attracts over 2 million visitors and business orders worth GP, GBP 100 million for the industry. <clears throat> uh, Wilton's Music Hall, built in 1743, is the oldest still functional music hall in the world and an important part of the London's musical history. London is one of the world's most largest film production centers with over 14,000 hours of film shot here annually including several Bond movies and numerous motion pictures. London has 380 public libraries and the renowned British Library has over 170 million books and manuscripts from different historical eras. Uh, London food scene, equally eclectic where global cuisines eateries abound. City has, um, as of 2018, has an impressive tally of 70 Michelin starred restaurants with 58 restaurants holding one Michelin star, nine restaurants with two Michelin stars, and three that carry the maximum award of three Michelin stars. So definitely wanna probably go check those out, right? Probably mm -hmm. expensive though. Londoners speak more than 300 languages, which is more than any other city in the world. All right. English flag. So the English language began in England, naming named after Angles, um, Angles, a Germanic tribe which migrated to Britain. It is West Germanic language that was first spoken in early medieval England. Uh, vocabulary has been significantly influenced by Norse, Latin, French, and closely related to Frisian languages. English has evolved over a period of 1400 years. Modern English, as we know it today, spread around the world from 17th to 20th centuries due to the expansion and influence of the British Empire. Following British accents and English dialects are commonly in use in the UK. Received pronunciation, that's that RP they referred to, also referred to as a standard accent, has been spoken by upper classes in the UK and in Southeastern England and is considered the golden standard of spoken English. Cockney, 
originated from the East End of London, spoken by working class, second most famous British accent, uh, es Estuary English. Accent is found in Southeast England and East Anglia, Anglia. Southwest British, an accent heard in South of England, extends to the Welsh border. Midlands English, divided between East and West Midlands with some differences. The most famous of this dialect is Brummy or Birmingham English. Northern near England English, accents and dialects spoken in cities like Manchester, Leeds, and Liverpool. Gordy or Geordie refers to accents and dialect in Northeast England. Welsh English refers to accents and dialects spoken in Wales. Scottish English refers to the English spoken in Scotland and influenced by Scots, the local language. Today, over 84 um, 840 million people speak English as their first and second language, which makes it the second most spoken language in the world. It is the official language of 67 countries, as well as 27 non-sovereign countries, such as Hong Kong, making it a global ling ling lingua franca. English speakers are called Anglophones. And English is the most widely used language in newspaper, book publishing, international telecommunications, international trade, mass entertainment, and diplomacy. Uh, British pendant. Again, this isn't as exciting as the first part, huh? <laughs> we'll get their London sites and attractions, okay? All right. British pendant for manners and socially appropriate behavior is renowned across the world. Every culture over ages has been defined by the concept of accepted social interaction. However, Britishers in particular have been known for placing great importance in good manners. It is in relation to speech conducting oneself in public timeliness, body language, and dining. Politeness, reserve, and restraint are admired in the British society. British prefer congenial, congenial business relationship, but tend to get right down to business after a few moments of polite conversation. Do always get in line if in a shop, mall, or waiting for public transportation, and don't jump the queue. They'll knock you out, right? No, just kidding. <laughs> Do not stop walking in the middle of the payment, payment, okay, for taking a photo, okay? We get that a lot here in Vegas, okay? You're walking, all of a sudden they stop you, bang into them. Um, if one wishes to consult a map or speak with a friend, take a picture, always step to the side, not to block the path. Do not stand on the left side of the escalator, always on the right. Continue walking if on the left, Okay. Uh, British reputation for being reserved is known and over familiarity is in behavior is a big no. Britishers place a lot of importance on punctuality and it is considered rude if one arrives late for a business meeting, medical appointment, or on a social, formal social occasion. One should not feel offended if someone calls a person love, dearie, or darling. It is commonly used and not considered rude. Good table manners are essential. It is frowned upon to use fingers rather than cutlery to eat with. Okay, so don't, don't be with me. <laughs> All right, the cutlery is to be held correctly, which is the knife in the right hand, the fork in the left, and prongs pointing downwards and the food pushed onto the back of the fork with the knife. Wow, okay. Um, while in a formal dinner, numerous utensils are placed as it is customary to begin with utensils on the outside and work their way inward with each course. Again, always wanted to know how that worked. Now we know. Uh, summon a waiter by raising their hand. One should not wave or shout, hey, hey, I need, you know, I need a cocktail. No, just kidding. Okay. <laughs> All right, so just raise your hand, don't wave or shout. All right, Buckingham Palace, better understanding. We have characterized the sites and attractions of London into three focal areas. Royal London, the palaces, the tower, the churches, the monuments that have witnessed the evolution of London as a city for over a millennia. Key museums and galleries in London. Then you have under contemporary London, TBO holidays brings to the fore new futuristic futuristic sites, which are playing a key role in retaining its footprint as one of the most important cities on the global tourism map. All right, so here's the UNESCO World Heritage Sites, okay? 
Tower of London, one of the most iconic structures of England, is a historic is a historic over 900 year castle and fortress located on the north bank of the River Thames. Thames, 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 Thames. Thames thank you. It was founded in 1066 AD, and the White Tower, which gives the entire castle um, its name, was built in 1078 AD by William the Conqueror. The castle is made up of three enclosures. The innermost ward contains the White Tower. Inner ward was created around the reign of Richard the Lionheart, and the outer ward was created during Edward's um, first reign and is flanked by six towers, two semicircular bastions, and the castle encloses an area of 12 acres and still officially a royal residence. Cool. Tower has been variously used as royal residence, army barracks, and armory, a zoo, which housed exotic animals received as gifts from British monarchs, a prison, an execution chamber, a museum, a mint, records house and a jewel house where crown jewels are kept total of 23,578 pieces valued in billions of dollars uh this is a working royal castle offering stunning insight into historic events in london over the last millennium established in 1652 a.d the lines of king ex exhibition houses a magnificent collection of arms from medieval times to the 19th century the ye ye yeoman warders, also called um, beef eaters, guard the tower and are chosen from British armed forces who have put in 22 years of service and are selected on merit. You have six ravens live in the tower and legend has it that they, um, if they leave, Britain will fall. Tower of London was added to the UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1988. Westminster uh, complex, including the palace, abbey, and church, has symbolized monarchy, religion, and power since Edward the Confessor built it. You have Westminster Palace, one of the most recognized landmarks in the world and one of the most elegant buildings in London. That combined with its spectacular location on the banks of the River Thames in central London makes it one of the most popular must-see tourist destinations in London today. Palace of Westminster is also known as House of Parliament, having House of Lords and House of Commons. The original Palace of Westminster was commissioned by King Edward in 1045 AD. The palace, as we see it today, took 30 years to rebuild after Great Fire in 1834. The palace reconstruction commenced in 1840 AD, and it was completed in 1870 AD by architect Charles Berry in Gothic Revival style. The palace has 1,100 rooms, 100 staircases, and 4.8 kilometers of passageways, which are spread over four floors. Other points of interest, we have Westminster Hall, erected in 1097 AD, the oldest existing part of the palace. You have the Royal Gallery used for state occasions. The common chambers decorated in green is where MPs meet. Lord Chamber in lavish and decorated in red. The Octagon Hall or Central Lobby is the heart of the palace. Elizabeth Tower, the exterior of the palace, houses the Big Ben. And then the Victoria Tower houses parliamentary archives. Over 3 million records dated back to the 15th century are held here. And old continuing tradition, uh, yeoman still check underneath the House of Lords every bonfire night just in case naughty Londoners are planning to blow up the parliament. And when all is clear, they reward themselves with a drop of brandy. Westminster Abbey, formed by the Benedictine uh, monks in 960 AD, and the church was built on the site in 1060 AD. Rebuilding of the present abbey was on orders of King Henry III as a shrine to venerate King Edward and to provide a regal setting for his own tomb. The official name of the abbey is the Collegiate Church of the St. Peter at Westminster. The abbey has been the coronation church of the British monarch since 11th century and King Edward's throne or the coronation chair is, um, is on which every British monarch sits on during the coronation ceremony. In 1560 AD, the Abbey was designated with the Royal Peculiar, pe peculiar, which means the church is responsible directly to the sovereign. 
The Abbey has seen 19 coronations, the last being done in 1953 of Queen Elizabeth II. 17 kings are buried here and other prominent personalities buried here, including Isaac Newton and Charles Darwin, to name a few. The funeral of Lady Diana was held here. The Abbey Museum holds the wax figures of many previous monarchs in traditional full costume, and 17 royal weddings have been taken place here. Uh, with the most recent Prince Charles or Prince Williams with Catherine Middleton in 2011. And then St. Margaret's Church, Westminster, formed by the Benedictine monks and monks in 12th century church next to Westminster Abbey and since 1614 AD, official church of the House of Commons. It is dedicated to Margaret of Antioch. It was rebuilt under King Henry the Seventh from 1486 to 1523 and has been called the last church decorated in London in the Catholic tradition before the re re reformation. Uh -huh. It has been a popular place for society weddings, notable of former pr prime minister UK, Winston Churchill and Lady Clementine Hazier, Harold mm -hmm. Macmillan and Lady Dorothy Cavendish. Uh, the last Governor General of India, uh, Louis uh, Mountbatten and Lady Edwina, to name a few. Prominent citizens like Sir Walter Ra Raleigh, Admirals Robert Blake, and Richard Dean are buried here. Strong Royal Botanical Garden, Kew. Kew is a location of the Royal Botanical Garden, formerly um, a royal estate of Southwest London. It was established in 1759 AD, dedicated the nation in 1841 AD. The site houses the world's largest, most diverse collection of plants containing over 28,000 taxa of living plants, an herbarium the, of the over 7 million dried specimens and a library of 130,000 volumes in addition to archived materials, periodicals, prints and drawings. The Millennium Seed Bank, established in 1996, holds 2.25 billion seeds from 189 countries and is the largest wild plant seed bank in the world. Temperate House, the world's largest surviving Victorian grass house, reopened after its $57 million renovation in 2018 with specimens including the world's largest outdoor plant, while in contrast, the Bonsai House displays the miniature trees. Um, other glass houses include Davies Alpine House, the Evolution House, the Historic Palm House, the Rose Garden, the Secluded Garden, and the Waterly Lily House. The treetop walkway, 18 meters above ground, offers a bird's eye view of the forest and is unique experience. And then you have Jurassic Syed, uh, founded by Francis Mason, a plant hunter in Eastern Cape of South Africa, has been on the site since 1775, and is the oldest pot plant in the world. Site is home to the smallest royal palace in the country, gifted by people to Queen Victoria in 1837. And at Prince of Wales Conservatory, guests can discover 10 different climate zones. And Kew Gardens is renowned center of scientific research, which has played a key role in understanding the plant kingdom better. And the Maritime Greenwich, Historic buildings at Greenwich, an outlying district of London, symbolizes English artistic scientific endeavor in the 17th and 18th centuries. Home of the old Royal Navy College, the Royal Observatory, Greenwich Park, the Cut Cuddy Sark, one of the last intact tank clipper ships of the world, the National Maritime Museum, and the Queen's House. Greenwich is notable for the maritime history and for giving its name to Greenwich Mer Meridian and Greenwich Mean Time as world standard. The ensemble of buildings and landscapes that comprise um, the property preserve a remarkable high degree of authenticity in its form, design, and materials. One of the most popular things tourists do is to stand astride the prime meridian, the earth's line of zero degree longitude with a uh, foot in both the eastern and western hemispheres. Visitors can also observe a ball drop at the top of Greenwich Observatory at 1 p.m. daily, a tradition that has continued since 1833. Maritime Greenwich was described inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1997. Whew. Okay, Buckingham Palace. So these are more exciting ones, right? 
uh, located in the city of Westminster, one of the Britain's most iconic buildings, served as an official London residence of the British sovereign since Queen Victoria's time in 1837 AD, and also um, in the administrative headquarters of the monarch of UK. Serves as a venue for royal events, ceremonies. The monarch also holds weekly audiences with the prime minister here and also receives newly appointed ambassadors at the Buckingham Palace. Palace has 775 rooms, 19 state rooms, 52 royal and guest bedrooms, 188 staff bedrooms, 92 offices, and 78 bathrooms. The balcony of Buckingham Palace is one of the most famous in the world as British monarchs um, make appearances on the balcony as on important occasions. Palace houses the Queen's Gallery opened in 1962, exhibits works of art, from the Royal Collection and Royal Muse, located within the palace grounds, contains stables and carriage house of the British monarchy. The royal and state carriages, like Clarence, Barouches, uh, Fatams, um, Ascot, Landas, Brugams, etc. Again, I apologize for my mispronunciation. They are kept and used for state ceremonies and weddings. The Royal Muse is responsible for all road travel arrangements on the monarch and the royal family members. The palace is also scene of London's most popular display of pomp and circumstance, the changing of the guard, colorful display of precision, marching, and music. You have St. Paul's Cathedral, one of London's most recognizable landmarks, is an iconic Angelican, Angelican cathedral and the seat of the Bishop of London. It is located on the Ludgate Hill, the highest point of the city of London, the old cathedral was started by the Normans and completed by 1240 A.D. and the Great Fire of 1666 A.D. Sir Christopher Wren designed the rebuild, which took 35 years and was completed in 1710. The twin Baroque towers and the magnificent 365-foot dome of St. Paul's are a masterpiece of English architecture. One of the most well-known features of the cathedral is the Whispering Gallery, a whisper against the wall can be clearly heard at the other side, 112 feet away. The cathedral um, has been painted by famous artists like Pisario, Canaletto, and Turner. Films like Mary Poppins, Sherlock Holmes, Harry Potter have been shot here. Funeral services of prominent Britishers like Lord uh, Nelson, Sir Winston Churchill have been held here besides being the final resting place of Arthur Wellesley, the Duke of Wellington. Lord Nelson, Admiral of British Navy, and Alexander Fleming, scientist, to name a few. The marriage of Prince Charles and Diana was solemn, solemnized at the St. Paul's Cathedral. The London Dungeon, located in the County Hall in South Bank, the London Dungeon recreates a tour of the London's nastiest historic moments with gory stories retold with humor, go gooey props, and gruesomely costumed actors. The immersive walkthrough experience features the likes of Jack the Ripper, Sweeney Todd, Guy Fox, 360-degree sets, two underground rides, 19 interactive shows, including Whitechapel, Le Brinks, The Plague Doctor, and The Great Fire of London, ideal for children aged 12 and above. Big Ben is the nickname of the Great Bell inside the Palace of Westminster's iconic clock tower. The clock was designed by Edward Beckett and Edward Dent. Warners of Norton cast a bell for the tower in 1850, August of 1856, and the bell was originally meant to be called the Royal Victoria. The tower on which the clock stands is 350 feet tall, and in 1859, the clock was completed, was the largest, most accurate, four-faced, striking, and chiming clock in the world. The BBC first broadcast Big Ben chimes to the UK during New Year's Eve, broadcast in 1923 and the bell strikes were broadcast internationally on BBC World Service during King George's the fifth Xmas broadcast in 1932. Each clock face is 23 feet and composed of around 312 sections of opal glass. The hour hand is 9.2 feet and the minute hand is 14 feet. If he, art and light, is illuminating the clock face, that means the parliament is in session. Big Ben is a cultural system, a symbol of the UK, and has been named the most iconic film location in London. 
Big Ben is a focal point of the New Year's celebration in the UK with radio and TV stations airing its chimes to welcome the New Year. IMP update, Big Ben Tower is undergoing major renovations, which is expected to be completed in 2021. So as you see, this is an older training. Kensington Palace, located um, in the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea in, um, in central London, is a 17th century royal residence set in Kensington Gardens. Highlights for visitors include Queen Caroline's Cabinet of Curiosities, a collection of objects from around the world. King's Staircase, depicting painted um, frescoes of the court of King George I. Sunken Gardens was planned in 1908 and offers impressive flower displays all year round. And then Diana, her fashion story is an exhibition dedicated to her role as a fashion icon, charts her style evolution throughout the years, displaying many of her outfits. And then the Royal Opera House, located in the Bow Street in the Convent Garden, an opera house and major performing arts venue, also referred to as Convent um, Garden, opened in 1732 AD by John Rich. It was used for operas and oratorios. The opera has seen premieres of works by Walton, Tippett, and Holst, and it has been a national home of the Royal Opera since 1945. The Royal Ballet, since 1946, where visitors can enjoy world-class opera and ballet. And now we're talking about museums. The British Museum, um, located in Bloomsbury area of London, dedicated the human history, arts, and culture, our first national public museum in the world. Museum traces thousands of years of culture and history, displaying one of the world's finest collections of antiquity, antiquities, sorry, uh, through objects gathered from all over the British Empire when it was in, at its zenith. Museum collection contains over 8 million objects, including Rosetta Stone, Elgin Marbles, the Oxus Treasure, the Egyptian Mummies, and spectacular hoard of 4th century Roman silver known as Mildenhall Treasure. Victoria and Albert Museum is one of the largest museums in the world for decorative art and design, and its en envi enviable collection spans 5,000 years of art from ancient times to present day, drawing from cultures of Europe, North America, Asia, and North Africa. It was opened um, in 1857 AD, initially called the South Kensington Museum, and was renamed the Victoria and Albert Museum in 1899. Set in 12 acres, it has 145 galleries and houses, ceramics, glass, textiles, costumes, silver, ironwork, sculpture, prints, furniture, jewelry, drawings, and photographs. A collection of over 2.27 million objects. Most popular exhibits include Tipu's Tiger, the iron screen from Hereford Cathedral, contains 14,000 pieces, the Luck of Edenhall, a 13th century Syrian glass beaker. Famous 12th century Gloucester candlestick, sorry, made from nine. Gloucester. What is it? Gloucester. Okay, thank you. Nine different metals, glass weights for testing coins with um, Arabic inscriptions from 8th to 10th centuries. First commercially produced Xmas card invented in 1843 from Hen by Henry Cole. First director of the museum, um, the writing desk of King Henry VII, made in 1525 AD. Collection of 16,000 objects from China, including uh, King Queen um, Dynasty carved lacquer throne, the Ardebil carpet, made in 1539 AD, and Iran is one of the largest, most beautiful and important in the world. The most celebrated sculpture is The Three Graces by Antonio Canova from 1814 AD, Charles Dickens manuscript for Oliver Twist and his pen case. The earliest surviving wedding suit um, dates from 1673 AD belonging to King James II, Elton John spectacles, Adam Ant's jackets, Sandy Shaw's Euro Euro Eurovision costume, um, to name a few. You have Church with Churchill with Church. I'm sorry, Churchill War Rooms Museum, located beneath the Treasury Building in the Whitehall area of Westminster, is a museum comprising the Cabinet War Rooms, Churchill Museum, exploring the life of the British statesman. 
It is a historic underground complex that housed a British government command center during World War II. Its construction began in 1938 and is fully become fully op operational in 18 August of 1939 AD, just before Britain joined World War II. This is where Churchill and his cabinet monitored how the war was going for Britain, received intelligence, gave orders, plotted the route to the Allied victor victory over the Nazis. Highlights include Churchill's chair in the cabinet room, gouged with anxious scratch marks, a secure phone on which he used to speak to the President of the United States, a 15-meter interactive table that enables visitors to access digitized material from the Churchill Archives Center, and it is little detail that gives the biggest impression of the going-ons in wartime in Britain. Madame Tussaud, founded by Marie Tussaud, a native of Strasbourg, France, she learned the art of wax sculpting from Dr. Philip Curtius, who made wax models to illustrate human anatomy. A major tourist attraction in London with 14 interactive areas, the Wax Museum combines glitz, glamour, history, over 300 stunning wax figures. The wax figures include historical royal figures, sports and film personalities, London Transport Museum, located in Covent Garden, is home to information on all aspects of London city transportation as it evolved. Museum has on display 450,000 items, which cover over 200 years of London transport history. Walking through its galleries, visitors can learn more about the connection between the growth of the modern London and its world-famous transportation, which is not limited to historical items, but present-day transportation concepts and futuristic ones, too. The exhibits include the earliest wooden metropolitan railway coaches, variety of historical transportation artifacts. The children will enjoy all aboard family play zone miniature vehicles, which they can board and kids can try to repair miniature tube train and sail on the Tom's, Tom's Nipper. Other exhibits include horse-drawn omnibus, original tube map designed by Harry Beck, a sedan chair, which was London's first licensed public transport, and the first underground steam-powered engine, um, historic London transport posters, and much more to explore um, awaits the visitors. And then you have the Natural History Museum located in Chelsea. Natural History Museum of London established in 1881 AD, world-class visitor attraction, leading science research center, British government purchased the vast collection of bi biological artifacts from Sir Hans Sloan, with which the museum was established. Currently, the museum's collection includes over 70 million botanical items, 55 million am animal exhibits, 9 million archaeological relics, 500,000 rocks and minerals, and the newer addition of the museum are Darwin Center, which also serves as an education center. The Attenborough Studio shows native documentaries and the Spirit Collection Tour takes the visitors on a 30-minute exploration of the museum, books, and collection shelves. Museum also famous for its dinosaur uh, skeletons and ornate architecture. Science Museum located in South Kensington, London City, one of the majors, major tourist attractions. Founded in 1857 AD under Bennett Woodcroft, Science Museum currently holds a collection of over 300,000 items. Highlights include um, such famous items as Stevenson's um, Rocket, Puffing Billy, the oldest surviving steam locomotive, Crick and Watson's DNA mole molecular, 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 uh, whatever. Molecular. Thank you. Model. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Wells Cathedral Clock. From circa 1390 AD is one of the oldest clocks in the world. Marconi 1.5 KW transmitter, Pilot Ace computer, Amy Johnson's Gypsy Mob, and an uh, Anthony uh, Gormley Iron Baby. The museum also contains interactive exhibits and a recent inclusion in the IMAX 3D cinema showing science and nature documentaries. The Henry Welcome. Wing focuses on digital technology besides also having a dedicated library and much more awaits the visitors. Almost done. National Gallery, established 1824, located in the Trafalgar Square, central London. The Art Museum holds a collection of 2,300 splendid paintings from 13th to 19th century with constitutes as one of the finest collections of the European paintings. 
in the world. Paintings of legendary painters from early Italian era, early Northern European paintings, and Renaissance period. Italy, France, and Spain in 1600s. Holland and Flanders in 1600s, the 1700s and 1800s periods. Impressionists and many um, more form the nucleus of painting displays in this gallery. It includes great works of famous painters like Leonardo da Vinci, Van Gogh, Titan, Renoir, Michelangelo, Botticelli, Raphael, Rubens, Rembrandt, Monet, uh, Caravaggio, Anthony Van Dyck, uh, Dyke, uh, Valles, Velasquez, and many other painting maestros, along with the Ninja Turtles. Just kidding. <laughs> Best known masterpieces are on display are Baptism of the Christ, the Virgin of the Rocks, the Madonna of the Pinks, Van Gogh's Chair, the Rock of Venice, and Venus, and many more. Okay, Kate Britain was founded in 1897 AD, the National Gallery of the British Art, located in Millbank in the city of Westminster. In 1932 AD, the role was changed to include the National Collection of the British and Modern Art and was renamed the Tate Gallery after sugar magnate um, Henry Tate. In 2000 AD, the gallery underwent another transformation and now consists of a network of four museums which displays the British art from 1500 AD to present period. Tate Modern, known, um, also in London, located in the bank, bank site area of Southwark. It houses a collection of British modern contemporary art form from 1900s to the present day. Uh, National Portrait Gallery, located in St. Martin's Place, off Trafalgar Square and adjoining the National Gallery. When opened in 1856 AD, it was the first public portrait gallery in the world, houses 11,000 works in the form of portraits of historically important famous Britishers, photographs and caricatures, paintings, drawings and sculptures. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, boy, it just keeps going, huh? Yes. Right. <laughs> London Eye opened in 2000. The London Eye is the world's tallest cattle beard observation wheel located along the River Times in London. Structure is 443 feet tall, diameter of 394 feet, and took 1.5 years to build, where 170,000 tons of steel was used for its structure. Um, and over 3,000 tons of concrete were used for the foundation. Each capsule weighs 10 tons, can carry 25 people. 32 capsules of the London Eye are representat representative of 32 London boroughs. For superstitious reasons, there are numbered 1 to 33 for good luck, and there is no capsule number 13. The London Eye can carry 800 people each rotation, where capsules travel at a leisurely pace of 26 seven CMS, whatever that is, per second. And visitors can see up to 40 kilometers, I think, in all directions during the ride. London mm -hmm. Eye was inaugurated by then British PM Tony Blair, Prime Minister, as part of the Millennium Celebration as the most popular paid attraction in the UK. You have Sea Life London Out Aquarium, located in County Hall at the south bank of the River Times in central London, one of Europe's largest display of aquatic life. Highlights include thousands of marine um, creatures, themed settings, one of the world's biggest collections of cow nose rays, shark walk, ice adventure housing gentoo penguins, a glass tunnel walkway encased in blue whale skeleton, Rainforest of the world house um, houses dwarf crocodiles, piranhas, family of poison arrow frogs, claws houses gigantic Japanese spider crabs, and the colorful rainbow crabs. The sea life hosts educational programs for ch uh, school children, also part of the breeding programs, including the Cuban crocodile, seahorse, butterfly, goodies, and jellyfish. The view from the Shard, a 96 story skyscraper designed by the Italian architect Renzo Piano at 10,000 or 1,016 feet, tallest building in the UK. Modeled on a shard of glass, the Shard's exterior has 11,000 glass panels and the building has 72 habitable floors, viewing gallery and an open air observation deck on the 72nd floor at a height of 801 feet. 
a premium visitor attraction, journey to the top of the London's tallest observation, sky deck, enjoy unparalleled breathtaking views of the London and its iconic landmarks. Up at the O2, it is an exciting 1.5 hour um, climb over the roof of one of the most popular entertainment venues, the O2. Marvel at the 360 degree view of the historic Renwich, the Olympic Park, and the Canary uh, Wharf. Um, this experience can be available uh, by day, twilight, or sunset, along with the climb guides. Warner Brothers Studios tour London making of Harry Potter. Unique public attraction based in London, then permanent behind-the-scenes exhibit of Harry Potter films. The tour is styled as a theme park. The layout has been designed by the Thinkwell Group in um, close collaboration with productions, creativity, and special effects design designers of the Harry Potter films. Explore the cupboard under the stairs where the story of Harry Potter began, and there is a pair of Harry's, Harry's spectacles on display as well. Great, great Hall, the scale of this room is breathtaking and is filled with costumes from the films. Dumbledore's um, office is packed with the books, documents, and trinkets of the headmaster of Hogwarts. Learn wand moves, uh, able, um, avail the chance to learn wand moves from an expert and feel like a true wizard taking your OWL, ordinary wizarding level. The Hogwarts Express, where each carriage is themed around Harry Potter movie, and stand on a platform, nine and three fours, fly a broomstick, climb aboard a Nimbus 2000, and fly soar and swoop with the help of a green screen technology wearing official Hogwarts uniform. And end with a signed guidebook, the perfect way to remember this magical outing. There's also a training, there was a training on Harry Potter um, uh, visit or whatever. So again, you have Harry Potter fan, pull this information to help sell it, right? All oh, right, yeah. I love Shrek, right? Opened in 2015, based in Riverside Building, County Hall in London. One of a kind indoor walk and ride attraction inspired by DreamWorks hit Shrek films. Allows children to come face to face with the likes of Shrek, Fiona, Donkey, Ging, Gingy, <laughs> Puss in Boots, and the visitors also get to meet Shrek's friends, Madagascar, Kung Fu Panda, and How to Train Your Dragon. Highlights of the Shrek adventure include a visit to Cinder in Cinder Cinderella in Shrek's swamp, getting lost in dizzying mirror maze, going aboard the magical 4D DreamWorks bus with Donkey, acting as a tour guide, taking part in a 10 live fairy tale themed shows cooked up a magical spell at Magic Man's house and take a stroll around the spooky forest rescuing Pinocchio from the Wheel of Torture and much more. This is a world-class experience for families. How fun is that? I've never even heard of the Shrek adventure, so have to check that out. I like Shrek. All right, now getting around. All right, we're almost done, guys. Getting around London has... um. One of the largest urban transport networks in the world with integrated bus, rail, river, and road systems spanning the city's 32 boroughs. Mode of transports visitors can avail the following modes of transport to move around London. So you have the tube underground, a rapid transit system operating in deep level tube lines and subservice lines, and the total length of the tube is 402 kilometers. The network became known as the Tube in the early 20th century. This is an abbreviation of the nickname, the Two Penny Tube. Conceived by newspaper Daily Mail, which was given the central line as the journey fare was two pence when the line became functional. The London Underground is divided into nine zones and central London is covered in zone one. There are in total 11 tube lines, most of which connect the suburbs of the central London. Metropolitan Line opened in 1863 AD and is the oldest underground line in the world. The tube's world famous circle, red circle logo known as the Randall first appeared in 1908 AD. Classic diagrammatic underground map designed by Harry Beck inspired electric um, circuit diagram was first published in 1933. During World War II, at the peak of the London Blitz, 177,000 Londoners were sheltering in the underground steep level stations every night. And by the end of the war, there were over 22,000 beds installed in the underground stations. Uh, 
District line serves 60 stations. Piccadilly line serves 52. Northern line 51. And Central line serves 49 stations. The phrase, phrase Mind the Gap originated by the Northern Line in the year 1968, featuring the voice of the sound recordist Peter Lodge. 1969 AD, Queen Elizabeth II was the first reigning monarch to take the tube when she took the inaugural ride on the Victoria Line. The total number of carriages in the underground fleet is 4,134. Average speed is 33 kilometers per hour. There are 426 escalators in the underground stations, total number of lifts, 164, and total number of stations currently serving are 270. The tube service is available from 5 a.m. to midnight. Each year, over 1 billion journeys are made on the London Underground. Uh, London Underground is a suburban railway network serving London and its environs. It is orbital uh, network, which has um, um, amalgam um, amalgamated, sorry, six existing train lines. The East London Line, the North London Line, Watford DC, Goblin, and the West London, and the South London Line, thus forming a vital part of London's transport network. Espou established in 2007, it took over Silver Link Metro routes. Colored orange on the map, it now covers 112 stations on nine routes, across Greater London and the county of Hertfordshire serves 23 of London's 32. You have the Docklands Light Railway. Opened in 1987, automated light metro system serving Docklands area of East London. Colored turquoise on the map, the Dockland Light Railway reaches north to Stratford, south to Lewiswood, and west to Tower Gateway and Bay. DLR has 38 kilometers of tracks, serves 45 stations, it's played a, a critical part in carrying passengers during the 2012 Olympic and Paralympic Games. Also runs additional shuttle from Canning Town to Prince Regent stations when major ex exhibitions take place at the Excel ex Exhibition Center. DLR currently is London's first and only driverless train system of its kind, and it is part of the London Fair Zone system. You have the London Tram Link. Um, serve, tram service in London has had long evolution and there has been two separate generations in trams in London, 1860 to 1952 AD. First trams were horse drawn, then came the steam trams and in 20th century, the electric trams were introduced. Trams were not in use for over four decades since 1952 AD and were reintroduced in 2000. Today, the tram network has 28 kilometers of tracks, 34 trams, in the fleet and 39 stops. It also serves seven national rail stations, more than 50 bus routes. Tram service operate the Croydon to Wimbledon, Wimbledon uh, Beckenham Junction, Elmers, and, and New Addington. More than 29 million passengers avail tram service in 2016-17. You have the buses. Subsidiary of Transport for London manages bus service with Greater London servicing the areas of Berkshire, Bucking, Hampshire, Essex, Hertfordshire, Kent, and Surrey. The fleet consists of 8,600 buses operating on 700 routes, covering 19,000 bus stops. Fostering um, or a more cleaner environment of its total fleet, London Buses has 2,000 hybrid buses, out of which 73 are electric, and eight buses are fueled by hydrogen, emitting nothing but water in the air. London buses carry 6.5 million passengers every weekday. London buses are colored red since early 20th century for them to stand out in the crowd while the roof of the buses are painted white to deflect the sun's heat in the summer. London River Services, so it is a subsidiary of Transport for London, operates and manages leisure-oriented tourist services and commuter services on the River Times in London. The Thames River is used as a waterway for public transportation. Traveling by river is a great way to get around London where passengers beat the traffic and enjoy fantastic views of the city. Six river bus routes run the 22 piers. Services run early morning until late evening. All times clippers boats are wheelchair accessible and ramps are used to board the boats. Uh, visitors can use contact, contactless or oyster pay-as-you-go cards. However, top up services are not available at river bus piers, so passengers need to ensure they have enough credit beforehand in their cards to avail this service. 
Speedboat tours of London are getting increasingly popular with tourists. These tours are conducted on RIV, rigid, rigid inflatable boats. Times Rockets departs from London I Pier and Times Jet departs the Westminster Pier. Visitors can also ex explore London by water on a hop-on, hop-off Times River cruise sightseeing tour between Westminster, London I Bank side, Tower of London and Greenwich Piers. Visitors can purchase London Explorer Pass valid for one day and tour durations from 30 minutes to three hours. All right, Emirates I Airline Cable Car. Um, take to the air on London's only cable car and enjoy a truly unique experience in East Lon London. Open in 2012 and operated by TFL Transport for London, the cable car crosses the river tops Greenwich, between Greenwich Peninsula and Royal Docks to the west of Excel, offering a unique view of London. The ride is 10 minutes per way, and in rush hours, the speed of the cable cars are increased, so it takes five minutes per way. Cable car is based as mono cable a detachable gondola. It crosses the river at a height of 300 feet. The cable car has a maximum capacity of 2,500 passengers per hour in each direction. There are a total of 36 passenger gondolas, of which 34 of um, in use at one time with a maximum capacity of 10 persons per gondola. gondola. Sorry. All right, London Black Cab is an icon of London City. All drivers, in order to qualify as a driver for Black Cabs, must first pass the knowledge of London Ge Geographic um, Geography exam, which entails mastering the 320 basic routes, all of the 25,000 streets that are scattered within the route, and all the landmarks within 10 kilometer radius of Sharing Cross. Usually it takes two to four years to complete the course. Wow. Um, uh -huh. These cabs, cabs stand out distinctly due to their black color and shape. Cabs available for hire have a light on the top displaying word taxi, and once it's hired, the light is switched off. Black cabs accept only cash and credit cards. You have a licensed private hire vehicle. Uh, cover a wide range of services ranging from mini cabs to chauffeur-driven limousines. These cabs need to be pre-booked and price payment for the service pre-agreed upon. And then bicycles for hire launched in 2010, environmental friendly public bicycle hire scheme in London. The scheme now covers 100 kilometers in London, largest bicycle hiring scheme in Europe with over 13,000 bikes, 800 docking stations where the bicycles can be picked up and dropped off. Casual users have to use credit card or debit cards in the docking station to get the bicycle um, released for use. All right, um, hold on, let me write this down. Um, sorry, London Explorer Pass. All right, <laughs> take a notes, take a notes. Okay, next. Yay, all right, airports. Okay, city is served by six international airports, Heathrow, Gatwick, City, Staten, London, and South End. Uh, London airports serve 396 international destinations, 14 domestic destination, London airports handle 60% of all UK's air traffic. Heathrow is Europe's busiest airport. On an average, one flight takes off every minute. Heathrow covers 12.5 kilometers of land, has six terminals where Terminal 6 is used for visiting heads of states, VIPs, and for members of the UK royal family. Flights at Heathrow do not operate um, between 23.3 p.m. to 4.30 a.m. Currently, where this downtime is utilized for servicing security equipment, restock outlets, resolving engineering problems, clean the airport, and provide news re noise relief to residents. The Gatwick Airport derives its name from the Old English words, gap meaning goat, wick meaning farm. So the name means goat farm. And then the flights ex uh, Gatwick fly for more destinations than any other airport in UK, and about 20% of the traffic is charter flights, making it the largest charter flights airport in the UK. All right, and then you have the tram service, intermodal travel ticket, which gives the user access to London Underground, London Overground, TFL, Railway, Tram, Link, London Buses, and National Rail Service. Travel cards can be purchased one to seven days for any period of time from one month to one year. Oyster Card is a transport of London's co contactless electronic smart card. Oyster Card provides travel within the nine travel zones, which includes Heathrow Airport, certain outlying suburbs of the city. London traveling travel card valid for zones three, four, five, and six can be used on the tram route. 
day travel cards um, can be purchased in the variants of any time travel and off peak travel. And in the card, travel times are restricted, but this card is cheaper than any time card. Travel cards can be used for transport services outside Greater London of six central line stations, part, um, part of zones four, five, and six, seven metropolitan stations, zone seven, eight, nine, and 14 national rail stations under zones six and eight. Exceptions are travel on BAA Rail to Heathrow Central, Terminal 4 and 5, Watford Junction, served by London Overground. High-speed trains considered out boundary are not written within any of the travel card zones. Travel card entitles the holder to a 25% discount on Emirates Airline Cable Card in Docklands, 33% discount on scheduled London River services. Children's, children 11 years, um, below 11 years on most public transport when accompanied by a fare of paying adult and with a five to 10 oyster zip post photo card, children age uh, 11 to 15 get a young visitor discount on having a zip photo card. Children 16 to 17 pay half the adult rate on the two BLR and London Underground journeys with a 16 plus oyster photo card. Okay. All, right. All right. Do you have something? Oof. All right. Um, <laughs> Beating the heat of London, offering an exciting mix of world-renowned attractions, spectacular shopping, um, Bond Streets, okay, um, Regent Street, lineup of West Theater shows, admiring of the nation's um, gallery, taking a walk north from uh, Leicester Square into Chinatown, bustling hub of London's East Asian community, make the most of a fantastic restaurant that offer a wide range of global cuisines across central London. Stay, do tours, shop, dine to avail a unique, rewarding London experience. The below is a compilation compil of historic, modern, high-end hotels to enhance your London stay. Accommodations in central London, best addresses to stay by the area. So again, guys, you may wanna just take a quick picture of this if you wanna, you know, People want to stay in certain areas of London and then what hotels are available. Okay. And again, thank you, Suzanne, for putting it in there for us. Um, You're welcome. So, yeah, so check it out. I'm curious. I don't know if it'll pull it up. No. Okay. Um, all right. And can Canary, Canary Wharf, located on the eastern edge of the city and part of Docklands, it is an emerging financial hub of London and houses European headquarters of numerous major banks, such as Barclays, Credit Suisse, HSBC, uh, Citigroup, JP Morgan, and um, of professional service firms, um, such as KB, uh, KPMG, Infosys, MetLife, and media firms, such as Reuters, besides also having two EU agencies, European Banking Authority and European Medicines. Docklands Light Railway services connects this area with London City. Additionally, it is also served by London buses, London River services also linked to the London City Airport. And then accommodations in Canary Wharf, Wharf and surroundings, best addresses to stay in. Right here, you have the information, um, check it out, okay? Again, lots of Marriott. So again, you can use these for um, your own purpose uh, with your Marriott rates. All right, experts, let's hope you got this because I definitely don't. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's a lot of cultural information, okay? So a lot of detail. All right, so when did the door just Chester Hotel open. So yeah, this is going to go through all these pictures that we took pictures. Uh, 1931, but I did miss one. Boy, uh, look at you. All right. Yeah, no. Adam Tussauds Wax Museum open. 1912. Tussauds. Um, I got that one. Uh, 1835. That was 35. Thank you. Uh, settlement of Londonium or London founded. When was it founded? That was um uh, forty three. All right, eighty. And when was the British Museum established? I didn't get that. Let's look. Uh, yeah. All right. I know that that copy is Eastern of of London. 
Okay, East yep. London, okay. And they're more than Oh, I know Jules. Jules is the biggest number. Yeah. Right <laughs> yes, more than <laughs> I paid attention to that, huh? Uh-huh. All right. The tower was what was that one? What was the question? The jewels was the twenty three thousand five seventy. Yeah, that was twenty three thousand. We need the British Museum was established when the Big Ben became fully option operational. Uh, eighteen fifty nine for the Big Ben operation. Okay. Yes. The Tower of London was completed. Uh, ten sixty seven. I don't have any of those questions. All right. Mine are different too. Uh, Anglophone. Okay. Oh, the last question is 1100 rooms and 1100. Right. What is the question? If you'll actually read it, that would be helpful. Because are we, there are a lot of us that have them in either a different order or different questions. Okay. Yeah. So it, we have to, okay. Which, what's the question? Yeah. Uh, we, what was the last one that you just said? 1100. That's <laughs> was, how many rooms at the Westminster Palace. Thank you. <laughs> what was the settlement of the London men or London founded? When was London founded? Um, London 43 AD. 43. 30, 43? Yeah. yeah. When did the Big Ben become fully operational? The Big Ben, uh, 1859. I'm going to just put the answers that I do have inside of chat. Thank you. That's so helpful. Thank you. Did anybody get the question in which year was the Millennium Dome inaugurated? Well, if you want to get uh, it, enjoy 2000. Some thank you. Uh, Mimi, thank you so much for typing this in. <laughs> uh, when was the, yes, thank you. Uh, when was the British Museum established? That's another one I'm struggling with. All right. Yeah, I don't, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get I don't that. have that one either. The question says, oh. in, in between which years did Earl's Court uh, exhibit? Court exhibition center, yes. That's 92 and something. 92 and 20, 2001. Thank you. How many... Does anybody have the Deutsche Hotel open in Park Lane? The answer I have is that question. It's the in the answer, 1931. 1931 is the answer. Thank you. Um, in between I which years you. did Earl's Court post uh, the World Travel Mart? That's the last one. 1992 to 2001. Gotcha. Where did Cockney originate? I have one. In which year was the chair building inaugurated? Okay, got it. Yeah, I, 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 I got about it. Madame Tussauds, when they opened, 1812? 1835. Thank you. Hey, which Marie, one is that? For yours, the British Museum, it says, was founded in 53, it, but it opened its doors in 59. So I think 53 would be the answer for yours. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. All right. Wait a minute, because I'm not, I have a lot that I didn't do. No worries. We got you. Yeah, okay. I got a lot of these in the chat. How many okay, yeah. UNESCO Heritage one? sites are there in London? It's 70. How many? 70. Okay, for this one, uh, there are four of the UNESCO, UNESCO Heritage. But the answer for Annie hers uh, with the Michelin Star restaurants, they're 70. Okay, thank you. And the Shard Building was inaugurated when? Uh, 2009. Thank you. And the Tower of London completed when? I'm sorry, I can't. 1859, right? Oh, no, that was Big Ben. Tower of London <laughs> is not, I I don't have, I'm sorry. The Tower of London is 1063. The Tower of London completed was 1067. How about yes, the, uh, the yeah. Millennium Dorm inauguration? What year was that? The Millennium Dorm. 2000? Yes, ma'am. And then I have the um, how many U Unico heritage sites are in there in London? Four. 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 <clears throat> Does anybody have what are English speakers called? Anglophone. Yeah. The one that starts with an A. Anglophone. 
When was Madame Tussauds Wax Museum opened? <laughs> 1835 or 1847? 35. Oh, it's on the word. That one. Settlement of Londinium? 43 AD. One of mine was wrong. But I'm looking to see which one. I was thinking that your NESCO was 11, but I don't know. I had one wrong. Yeah, I did too. So is it 1847 or 1835? You still pass. Just remember that I had two wrong. So, so uh, how do we go back to it? Well, you don't have to. I mean, if if you got it, if as long as you passed, yeah, I passed. Uh, then you got your certificate. So I, I okay. mean, you can go back and retake it if you want. Um, oh, I see. We take the course. No. Yeah, <laughs> but if you no, pass, I'll, yeah. I'll leave it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. passed. I only right. missed two. All right, no worries. Again, as long as you guys pass. So again, congratulations. Okay, no, mine say I had uh seven out of ten. Okay, okay you have and to I gotta your... redo the whole thing. Okay. Yes. Yeah. My, okay. Mine Where did Cockney old. establish? Or I mean, English East East. East okay. How many rooms does the Westminster have? Eleven was not eleven. 1100. 1100? Yeah. Where did, I mean, when did the Dorster Hotel open in Park Lane? Uh, 1931. 31. Yeah. How many pieces? Uh, I think that was 23,578. Uh, in between which years did Earl's Court Exhibition Center host the World Travel Mart? That's it. I had used 92 to 2001. 92 to 2001. When did the Big Ben become fully operational? Um, hang on. Big Ben uh, is uh, 1859. 59. Okay, Which year? ladies. Um and gentlemen, I am going to disconnect now. Okay. Are we when did the Millennium one? go inaugurated? Thank you for attending. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question. Thank you. Just one question real quick. When was the British Museum opened? Uh, That's the only one I can't remember. Let's see. When, when was it opened established? or established? Hang on. Uh, 1753 for the British Museum. 1753? Yes, it says that Thank it was you. Found which year so was much. the Millennium Dome inaugurated? Uh, 1998, 2000. 2000. When was the Tower of London completed? Uh, <clears throat> Tower of London. Tower of London 1067 is what Mimi Scott here. Okay. When was Madame? Madame uh, Tussauds? Uh huh. Uh, eighteen thirty-five. Thirty-five. Okay, let me check it. Okay. I'll be glad when my voice comes back. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> okay, I passed. Yes. Thank you guys so yes. much. <laughs> Teamwork right. makes the dream work, right? Everybody, make sure print your certificates and and. I'm gonna redo and mine and give me different questions. Right. Yeah. All right. Did, did everybody pass now, though? So we, we don't want to leave anybody behind. And, and that's why it's good that we do it together, because if you just did it by yourself, you know, now we went through and everybody got their answers. So, again, you know, work together, guys. So, again, congratulations. Um, hey, everybody get in? Yes. You're all good? Okay. Yeah. Congrats. Thank you, Marnie. You're Thank welcome. Thank you, Marnie. Will you Will you be posting the recording today? I will be posting both the recordings today. Um, next Thank you very much. Wednesday, if you guys haven't done, um, if you guys want to learn how to like book on Vax, that's what yeah. we're doing right now. Apple Leisure Group. Um, we're on part three now. Uh, so we did part one. 
And part two, we're going to be doing part three on Wednesday. It's very, very informative. It really helps you to understand like payments, booking, stuff like that. So join us for that. And then um, and then next uh, on Friday, we're just going to go into Royal. We finished the Royal Caribbean, but there's a few other we're going to finish on there. Some kind of like fun things. And then uh, next Wednesday, Saturday, we're doing Paris. So we're going to learn about Paris now. So um, okay. join us for that. So again, thank you guys. Uh, congratulations. Can I ask a question? Uh-huh. Um, do you use your certificates in any of your, um, like when you're doing, I don't know if you use Travify or Travel Joy or anything when you're putting some of these together for some of your people? Um, what like, do you mean by use? <laughs> like use them as part of your promoting. Um, promoting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. put it everywhere, all over social media. You want people to know that, look, look at me. Look what I learned now again today. Look how much I'm learning. Look what I can do for you. You know, stuff like that. So, okay. you know, and a lot of them, they give you like things for your um, uh, signature line. They give you like certificates for that, you know, or little um, like icons or logos to put on to show that you're now a carnival specialist and stuff. So definitely, yeah, you wanted to get it out there. You want people to know that you know, look at me. I, I know about Paris now. I know about London now. You know, I can help you. Um, so, yeah, definitely, you know, get it out there and, and share. And again, share in the chat groups and so say, guys, look, this was so fun. You know, we all just learn together. And, and look, I got two certificates today. Um, you know, join us next week, you know. So, again, okay, it's mama, mommy, that's that mean this. So Good my morning. question, I guess, is do you make it uh, like a document or do you just drop it in and make it um, like part of the, that's what I'm saying. Do you make it a document in the, in the proposal or something when you're giving it? You just add it to your signature line. Oh. And I personally, uh, it depends on what the itinerary is for. Like if it's a cruise, you know, on Viking, I'll put Viking specialist or Royal Caribbean, you know, so it's specific to that itinerary. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Well, so a friend just I met, I haven't seen her in four years. And she goes, I absolutely want to go back to London. And then I just saw today that Marty was doing London. So mm -hmm. I went, oh, my gosh, I, you know, don't know anything about london i haven't been to london so here i said i'm gonna do london today and yeah. so she says i need to go back and so now i know much more about london and, than and i did and so now i can wow her with what i know about <laughs> london and send her look what i know about london and i'm certified in london and see what i could put together for her because she wants to go next year yeah absolutely you can put um london specialist in your signature oh okay i see what you're saying yeah. oh you can put the okay. pictures some of the pictures now that yeah. that you know we that we save to the itinerary and stuff also you know right the guy the shard you know and all that and you know, we can really help you with this and stuff. So yeah, you know, and then okay. if she has questions about something, now you can know to go back and pull the more detailed information on that. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and and I just didn't know how I actually pull my actual certificate if somebody or you, you know, besides posting it to all my so social media as mm -hmm. well and get it out there. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And they get emailed to you also. So um, yeah, you can like shrink it down or or take, you know, little bits of it or whatever. So um, again, you know, and, and ask in the chat groups and stuff also, how do you do this? How do you do that? Because that's what that's about. We want to share and help each other. So, you know, okay. if, if you have something, you're like, hey, I just learned about London and look at this, look at this cool thing. And they're hey, how do you do that? Well, we got on here and here it is. And then you can share like my, you know, YouTube channel where we'll be posting it and stuff. So, um, 
again, just, you know, the main thing is stay plugged in. Let's have some fun. If you guys have some place, like I said, I'm doing this because I'm going there next month. Um, if you right. guys plan on going somewhere again, you know, like here, you're going to Morocco, Nashville, you can check these out. These are already in here. Um, but if they're not in here, we can go ahead and do it for next month or the next month. So we can make sure that, you know, you find out about it. One time we were going on a cruise. So we were going to Puerto Vallarta, Mazalan, um, and I got on and did the training on it so I could find out what not to miss, what, you know, what to get in and see and do, et cetera. So um, again, appreciate you guys. Um, you know, just again, let's have some fun and um, 